Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, today, it's gonna be all about wiring. We're gonna use our R5 unterminated loom and we're gonna wire up this entire car that Scott's made an assignment for in the software. So we're gonna use that. We're gonna use every single function that we can and every input that we can to get this car done. But before we start wiring, I wanna tell you a couple of different reasons why wiring the R5 is different to wiring a conventional ECU system. In order to understand how simple the wiring of an R5 is, we must first understand how we would normally wire in a standalone ECU. The first and most common way is to use a fuse and relay system. In this type of setup, the ECU and all powered devices get their power from the battery through a relay and fuse block. This is usually the cheapest way to get your engine running, but is also the most complex as the ECU needs to send signals to a relay that then triggers the device. With only a few basic devices, such as a fuel pump, thermofan, injectors, ignition power, as well as the ECU itself, this can quickly add up to a lot of wires as every device needs to be connected to battery power, as well as the switch to turn the devices on or off appropriately. All of these are fused for short protection as well, which in turn adds even more wiring into the mix. The second way usually employed in more serious track cars is to use a standalone power distribution module, or PDM. The PDM's job is to receive a signal from the ECU or external modules and then send power out to that device. This method does away with all fuses and relays as the battery is connected directly to the PDM which powers both the ECU and all other devices in the vehicle like pumps, fans and all lighting. Wiring is simplified with a PDM. However, it does still need to receive instructions from the ECU either directly from wired inputs or over the CAN bus. Having an integrated PDM in the Nexus R5 takes things to a whole nother level. The R5 receives power and ground directly from the battery. It has inbuilt drivers that are capable of sending out power to those devices. Having full integration and control in one unit means devices like thermofans, fuel pumps, starter motors, coil and injector powers, and headlights can all be powered and switched directly through the Nexus R5. You no longer need to run separate wires to a fuse box or relays or even a PDM. One box now controls it all. With the engine harness, we were able to utilize the factory wiring for plugs and things like the injectors, ignition, cam control sensors and the solenoids, the crank sensors, as well as a few of the temperature and pressure inputs. We were then able to use the two firewall connectors to join the Nissan wiring and the Haltec wiring together. Scott and I then added in a whole bunch of new sensors that we would be able to use for data logging and some engine protection functions. So it's time to get all of this installed in there. If you want to see a more in-depth step-by-step series on how to wire your ECU from scratch, I've already covered this in a nine episode vlog. We'll put the link in the description. So before I click this in and uh, put it in its home, I'm just gonna use the power probe just to double check that we've got all the connections going to the right places and the ground circuit's all working correctly. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly, see, I've got an indicator on that side, so that's good. Got an indicator on that side. Should hopefully have a headlight or a parker working there. And we've definitely got a headlight working there, so that's cool. So we're, uh, we're all connected up there. Uh, I've got a couple of fans to test out as well. So we'll just make sure that they turn on and then we're ready to get onto the engine side of things. After the harness is all put together, it's a simple matter of doing a few tests and then plugging everything in and then fastening the loom to the chassis for security.
So I've roughed in the loom really, really quickly, um, just where I want to get things in place and position roughly where they're going to be in the car. Um, I've got the main ECU loom, uh, I've got my battery cables. Also here I've got a uh, USB power um, as to the owner's request. Uh, you might want to charge GoPros or keep the power onto a GoPro. So um, that'll be really, really handy. So um, that'll just come on with ignition power. Uh, I've got the main ignition switch. So we're going to try and mount that somewhere in the, in the cluster or the carbon dash that goes in here. Uh, I've got a little lighting strip and a lighting strip just to make things a little bit easier to see. Um, it just makes the job so much easier in here, particularly on race day in a, gar in a garage, in a pit. Um, it just makes it really easy to see everything. So I, I find them really, really handy. Uh, we've got a reverse camera. Uh, we've wired one in, so when he's strapped in, he doesn't have to try and turn his head around with a helmet. It's just gonna be really, really easy to see it all on the, on the screen up here. Uh, we've all, of course, got a drive-by wire pedal, which I've wired in. Um, we've made provisions in the future for a steering angle sensor. Um, Scott wants to be able to log that in the future, um, particularly against wheel speeds, braking pressures and steering angles to get the most out of the car that we can one day. Uh, here we've got a couple of brake sensor, uh, brake pressure sensors. Um, they will be wired into the ABS kit. Um, so we'll get onto that soon, but uh, I'm gonna move up into the engine bay to finish that side of it now. So we've got the engine loom, we've got the body loom. Uh, they're both uh, plugged in and screwed into our bulkheads up here. Um, this is where the customer requested that they go. Um, so that was actually a pretty easy job, just uh, two big hole saws and then a quick clean up with the die grinder. Um, these work really, really nicely. So I'm actually really happy with how these turned out. Uh, we've run the loom down and around and across up to the other headlight and grounded it over there. This headlight is grounded up over here. Uh, we've got a battery cable, which I've pre-run um, just cause it just took a little bit of time. Uh, we've got a little uh, EGT sensor here for this bank. We've got an EGT sensor for that bank. A couple of boost sensors down here and temperature sensors. Uh, we've got our fuel pressure sender, a sensor wired up over here. Uh, we've actually got an ambient temperature, so I'm gonna screw this one on just underneath the manifold here so we can get a rough idea of what temperatures the engine bay is getting up to. Uh, the injectors, I didn't show you plugging them in just because they were really annoying. So um, took the rails out, plugged in all of those injectors, put the rails back in, put the manifold back on. Uh, we've got our throttles connected up, coils connected up. Um, that's really about it. Our map sensor on an extension over there. Uh, we will go through and p-clip all of these properly. Uh, the zip ties are just holding everything in place for now, just so we can confirm everything is working. Once the harness and hardware, such as the keypad, dash, reverse camera system, and the R5 are all installed, we can then power up the whole system to do some final checks and see if we've got everything working and performing as expected. This car's harness is split into four main sections. The engine bay harness, which takes care of all the engine sensor inputs and outputs. There is also another engine bay loom, which does all of the body control in the front of the car, running the fans, as well as all the headlight functions. The rear harness. This section controls the fuel, oil, and cooling pumps, the power steering pump activation, as well as the tail lights, brake lights, and the reverse camera. And lastly, the in-cabin wiring. In this harness, we have the R5, the 15-button keypad, the IC7 dash, the shift knob, as well as the battery. This section is where all four harnesses come together through the firewall bulkheads. How did you find it? This is our first big Nexus install mm, here. How did you find it one end to the other? It was a little bit different, but I'm actually gonna say easier than any other install I've done simply because I could bring every single wire and every single function and every single power device yeah. all back to the one place. Not do I allocate some here, some here, some here, some here, linking two devices together. It actually was really, really easy just to plug it all and get it into the one central spot. 
and a bit that I know I'm a little bit guilty of is doing a flying lead harness with a fuse box assembly and all the relays and stuff. I, I do always end up with a bit of a bird's nest in the corner. Even having a PDM where it all clumps together, then some goes here, some goes there, some goes here, yeah. and then it all branches off into different spots. It was just, it was actually pretty neat, um, but a challenge at the same time because it's just never really yeah. done it before. So it was good. It makes sense. And I know I'm, it, I'm a little bit, it is a bit confronting that you've just wired, what, 124 wires into this thing. We now need to go through and assign every pin. We need to make sure that they've all got the right logic behind them. We yeah. may need to make sure all the sensor calibrations are right. Like it's driving the, positive, <laughs> driving negative, uh, voltage <laughs> in, voltage out. Uh, yeah, there's a lot to <laughs> go through. I suppose what we just need to remember that it's, we just need to assign a little bit more time to doing that yeah. because we've now got five ECU connectors. Yep. It's two and a half ECUs. Like it, it just takes more time to configure this now. Yep. But um, we should get into that. Instead of we, how about you do that? And well, I'll go catch up on my work that I need to do. I do admit I did put Dave in it a little bit and he's done a hell of a job wiring this thing. I kept coming downstairs and looking at it. And now, even with the way that it's sitting there right now, I look at it and to be honest, it doesn't actually look like Dave's done that much work, which is probably one of the best compliments you can give a wiring guy because you look at the engine and it looks the same as it was when Dave O started. But that's the beauty of it. It's so neat and tidy. You've done a cracker job, Davo. Thanks, man. All right, well, I guess it's all up to me now. So Dave's done the handover. I'm gonna sit down with the software. I'm gonna connect my laptop wirelessly and get a comfortable chair because I've got plenty of typing and configuration to do. I've got to go through all the functionality that was on the list that we originally had for this car, set everything up, start it. Try and get the thing running, prime the fuel system, make sure we've got no leaks and do all the basic mechanical stuff before we try and get it running. Get the thing running, warm it up, write a new list of stuff to do before we can put it on the dyno and try and get it going. Righto, well we've got plenty to do. So we'll see you next week.